Welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable, and it is a great honor that we are joined today by Greg Penske, who is the chairman and CEO of the Penske Motor Group. Greg, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks, Ted. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, we have heard so much, Greg, at every event. Uh, the name Penske comes up, uh, Longo Toyota comes up at every event, and there are so many so many best practices that have come out of your organization. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to ask you a few questions here about your organization and uh, how you do things because you obviously do things right. Um, you. You've been in the business an awfully long time and uh, I've heard that you are passionate about people, uh, the human capital side of the business. Um, How has that impacted your organization's uh, longevity? Listen, Ted. First, thanks for thanks for having me on. And again, I guess I, I represent all of our team members here at you know Penske Motor Group and all our stores. So, um, but uh, but when you think about you know human capital, and I think we talk about that a lot. Uh, you know, we have our internal guests, we got our external guests, and I think over the years, you know, a lot of people say it, but but they're the reason we win. You know, each and every day. And I think the biggest thing we've tr we've tried to do over the years is really take our time when you go hire someone to really make sure that they're the right for your culture, the right fit um, with your organization. I mean, a lot of people, I think they say, man, I need three or four people back here. They don't want to pay overtime instead of paying the overtime, which you should do, make sure you get the, you know, the right team member, you know, I think on the, um, you know, on the bus. So we really uh, take the time on the hiring side, um, you know, really to go through probably four or five, you know, different um, interviews any one of the team members can say, I don't like that person. There's a reason why. And, uh, and then if they get hired, then of course we, we make sure that hopefully this is the right choice for them. So we go through, actually do uh, 30 day interviews, checkups to say, Hey, how are you doing today? You know, uh, how's how's it been at, at our, at our business? Is this what you expected? You know, is, if it's not, maybe we need to pivot and move them maybe to another you know place in the, in, in the organization. So I think for us, you know, it's so important that, that those those team members, it's our job, I guess. I kind of look at ourselves uh, as owners and as managers of the business, as guest relations managers for our team members and also our consumers and our guests. And if you think that way, you got to give them the right tools to win, right? Give them a nice place to work. Hopefully give them the right salary and benefits um, and long-term incentives to have them stay with the team so they can take care of them and their families and help them manage through the good and bad times. We just, you know, went through a, a very tough time with the pandemic. Everybody, I'm sure, listening on this show and watching this show, um, you know, had the same thing happen. But without great people, and 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 when you when and that means it's getting the right people on the bus, as we say, each and every day, and that takes time and effort. And once you do that, and you treat them with respect and and give them the right tools, I think overall we see low turnover. Yeah, wonderful. And you know, I I don't think as many folks watching who don't know. But if there are, uh, Greg, if you don't mind, tell us about your portfolio of uh, premier and award-winning dealerships that you've built, uh, what products, what locations, and perhaps maybe what's what's next on the drawing board. Okay. Yeah, so first we have uh, where I am today, the, the Longo Toyota, uh, Longo Lexus campus. Uh, it's about 10 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. We sit on about 55, uh, about 55 acres. We sell, of course, the Toyota and Lexus products. And we have our team members, about 800, over 800 team members. Uh, we speak 48 different uh, dialects of uh, dialects of languages. So we've owned this business since 1985 and uh, took it over from uh, Dominic Longo, who actually built the, uh, built the dealership. Um, he had a, had a very good way of, of his, his was take care of each guest, um, like a guest in your home. Even I know they've talked about that with Lexus, but he was one that was so strong on, on, on taking care of the guests and the team. And we were able to, you know, unfortunately he passed away and, and we took over the business and have tried to continue to, to build on that, that great reputation uh, he had over the years. We have a store, Lexus of Stevens Creek, uh, which is up on Stevens Creek Boulevard in, in San Jose, Santa Clara County. Uh, we've owned that business. Actually, this will be our 20th year. We bought it August 4th of, of um, 19, uh, 1992. So that's been a, been a great, uh, excuse me, 2000, excuse me, 2002, 2002, and uh, been a great business for us. Um, we have about uh, 150 team members at that campus, and and we actually have one of our, our team members just got moved up here about a year ago. We had a team member been running the business for about 10 years, uh, moved to another location, 
But uh, Tom Slagle, who actually uh, was in the fixed ops department, ran our fixed ops department, and we moved him up to be our general manager, just had his uh, best, uh, had a great year, had his first year in uh, operating in that position, and really has done a, done a great job for our team up there. So, And then finally, we have uh, Longatota Prosper. Um, that is in uh, right, at the, right up north of Frisco, um, north of Plano, Texas. Uh, we opened that store actually four years ago, um, and um, right at the 380 and the uh, the toll road, right with the Dallas North Tollway, and they they meet. So we've got there about 20 uh, about 20 acres at that location, you know, as well. So really, uh, you know, got a great uh, great uh, area of diversity of geographically. I think here in California, uh, Southern and Northern California, and then of course in Texas. And I think ultimately, you know, we're always looking at new opportunities. Um, you know, for, for our business. Uh, we like bigger stores. I think that's always been for us, you know, volume stores that are at least on the new car side that are generally, you know, north of 2000 new units and then used will come with that. Um, but I think, you know, right now we're, you know, I think you got to be a little careful right now. Prices are very high, you know, when you look at the, uh, what's out there, you know, today, but, you know, the right brand and the right market that we can tag on to the markets we have today. I think we'd, we'd look at those. Wow. Now, now, something I have heard so much about, Greg, over the years is the average tenure of your team members. It's extraordinarily high. So uh, give us, you mentioned the hiring and the getting the right people on the bus, the training processes. Tell us a little bit about, if you don't mind, how you do that and how you help retain those team members. Yeah. So first, I think we have a saying, you know, hard to get in and, and uh, you know, hard to get out. Right. So as I said at the beginning, you know, going through the interview process, making sure you take the time to really, you know, one interview with 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 a team member doesn't really give you, I think, a sense of, you know, who they are and, and, and exactly, you know, will they fit our organization? And that's why we actually go through four or five interviews before, you know, we would hire a, uh, you know, hire a new team member. So so that's I think that's very, very important. Um, once they are on, uh, look, we got to tell them what our culture is all about. We want to tell them exactly you know, what we expect, how we like to do business. Um, we, we have a, uh, we have on our, all of our, our, um, uh, our different, uh, uh, name badges, excuse me, sorry, name badges, uh, oh. on the back there, we have our kind of our 20, 20 days of Penske way. And that sets the kind of the culture and the, and, and what we like to like to see. And, uh, when they come on board, they'll go through Penske college, They'll get training uh, through there, usually five days to start, uh, really just understanding the business, getting their benefits, getting all the basic things out of the way that first week. And I think that's probably one of the most important thing is really setting that tone and standard, you know, every every single day uh, with the team. Then we generally at 30, 30 days or 45 days, you go back and you talk to the team member, make sure how are they doing, how are they going, how are they working with their business, as we talked about earlier. And are they enjoying where they're, you know, where they're working, right? Do they enjoy that particular uh, job that they, they signed up for? Um, you know, if they didn't, uh, we, we pivot and maybe give them another chance at, a, at another part of the, um, you know, another part of the, uh, of the dealership. So um, I think, uh, you know, consistent training all the time. We try at least online, uh, you know, every 60 days or so to have a team member being trained. We also have mentors that we put on as well when a team member starts. So when well, you look on the service side, if you're an ASM starting there, uh, we have them go with another ASM and, 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 and tag along for at least a month uh, or longer until we feel they're ready to be able to talk to a guest on their own. Uh, we actually pay that, that ASM um, you know, extra to be able to do that. We do it on the sales side as well. And, and, and again, a sales consultant that'll come on our, into our team, generally will take over a month, even if they've been at other, retailers at least a month before we let them talk to a guest. Uh, we just think it's uh, our work, you know, they, they can talk to them, but really working with someone side by side. Um, so again, I think the most important, I believe when you, when you start a new team member is that first month or month and a half is so important. A lot of times you hear, you know, they come from different businesses or even our industry and they get hired on and they kind of get left. Hey, there's your desk, you know, here's your phone, go make phone calls or, they don't really go into the details of the process, you know, what we expect and what the culture and what those things are. I've seen it over the years. Um, and I think that's really made a difference. So you want to start on that first day, you know, they go home and they say, God, that was the best day I ever had. New dealership, new business, wherever they're, you know, they've never been in the business before and uh, the best welcome, right? Whether they come in, give them balloons, 
put their name on a, on a sign, uh, you know, do all those things, introduce them, walk them around. Um, I think that that really sets the tone right away. And I think they see that once they're here for a long time, that all the team members feel the same way. The other thing I think that we have on our badges, you know, today, we don't have, we don't have titles. You know, no one has a title, you know, on our, on our badges. You know, everybody here is to do the same thing and that's to take care of each other and to take care of our guests, you know, that come in our, in our businesses each and every day. So I think that tone, and quite honestly, I think also longevity is, you know, when you have uh, team members that potentially uh, are, are hurting your culture, uh, you got to make a move and you got to change. You know, you got to change and make sure you're, you're talking to that person. And for some reason, they don't work out. You're able to, you know, go through and, and say, hey, look, you need to move on because we don't think it's working for you, you know, or for us. So I, I know one of the things we find in our employee surveys, probably the number one item is we don't move fast enough you know, on team members in some cases, because we give them a lot of chances, which we do. Um, but, but you know, that, that affects culture, right? When you have someone who's not doing the job, you know, each and every day. You know, one of the big topics here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable for the past year or more, Greg, has been that term culture. And we didn't hear as much about it years ago, but you've been, with, with that Penske way that you just mentioned, you've been really cultivating that. And I, I know I've heard it's a group of 20 underlying principles that focuses on the guests, the team members. Uh, would you mind just sharing us maybe what a couple of those principles are? Yeah. So I th when we when we when we decided to to put together kind of the Penske way and have those different principles, you know, a couple of things is what we thought about. Number one, when a new team member starts, uh, if they're not able to go to training right away, we don't do training. You know, so if I started on a Thursday, you know, you get them in and introduce them to their benefits. And so every Tuesday is when we actually have those meetings, right? So they would come back and go through it. Um, but we said that would automatically they would understand exactly what our culture is without us even talking about it on, on the, on the, uh, on the Penske way. And so we said, look, we need to start these principles. It also helps where you have our shift meetings that we have each and every day or Penske way meetings. And it allows us to find out on the teams who's here. So for example, you look on the service drive where you need a certain amount of valets to help inter you know, introduce the guests, maybe take them home on a shuttle um, we'd find out that, you know, by the time it came, we had to take a guest back on the shuttle that, you know, that Greg didn't show up that day. So you're able to automatically know who's on your team, who made it. Um, even if you go into the back of the business where there might be where we have our, some of our car wash areas and so forth. All of a sudden you have, you know, one or two not there. Then you have a problem not to be able to take care of the guests. So allow us to react to to if there's an issue um, and no one shows up, we can we can have, act and pivot and bring in our crunch teams or they'll go drive a, a van and take a guest home or they'll help on the drive or go back into the, you know, back into the, uh, the wash rec area. But, you know, I've got a couple, I guess, favorites of mine, you know, that I have in there. And one of them is, of course, you know, is your success is our success. So when, when team members come on, we want them to be successful. We want them to win with our team. And, uh, and, you know, and if we're not doing that, we need to know that. So um, in that Penske way, we talk about, you know, communication, goes both ways. It's just not a one way street on communication. You know, go to the, have the team member talk to you, get, 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 get in, get information on how we can do better as a team. Is there processes that are broke? There's something we, you know, we're missing are they, or we don't have the tools we're giving you to win to affect that. So we, we, it's very important that they get this successful and they can move up, you know, with our business as well. We want them to grow and move with our team. And we actually, what we do is we actually show them a roadmap you know, when, when they get hired is here's where you can pivot and go. I mean, you could start as a valet, um, you know, you can move to this service area. You can be a, a, a quick service writer. You can be an ASM. You want to pivot and go from there, come back to sales, be part of our technology specialist, be part of our product specialist, um, then move up into sales, finance, you know, into, into management and so forth. So I think we give them that roadmap as well help. So that's kind of your success as our success. Probably the most important is ethics, honesty, integrity. So that day today, that, that basically says on that day is, hey, this is how we do business. And I think what's happened is we've also found it's going into their personal lives as well. That they say, a lot of people say that, hey, the Penske way and what you've been able to build with all of our teams, that we go home and we actually try and practice in home and our home life that way as well. So um, I think when someone's wearing a uniform, and it says your, your name on it, uh, you know, and you're out having lunch or you're going somewhere else, you want to make sure that they're having that honest integrity, you know, how they talk to people and how they act. So that's, 
that to me, I think is one of the best. And that sets the tone that there's, there's no gray area in a decision on how you do business. It's the right way, but there's no way to do it. And I think that's something we've upheld over the years, which has been, which has been a positive. And then finally one for my father who started way back on this one is effort equals results. And I think that too, I think, I don't say effort is, you got to be there 24 hours a day, but I would say when the effort is there, you're focused, you know, you're focused to do your job and to do it well. And with that, you know, we try and reward you and, and uh, with that success and we, you know, we win together. So that's how we've used it over the years. And I think it's been a great, uh, you know, great part of our culture and our team, Uh, but you got to earn it every day. I think, you know, we, I look at this business as we have a, you know, every day is a new day and we have a race every day. And in that race is you got to have the right team members, you got to have the right strategy, you know, to get you through the day. You got to be able to pivot and be able to affect, go through change if something happened and go exactly perfect. And at the end of the day, if, if you do a great job, you know, you, you, you'll win. You'll get those guests will come back, we, you know, with referral and repeat business. And uh, but it's execution. I mean, I think that is probably something that you know, every day that that guest comes in and says, well, every time I come in here, I get a great experience. I don't have to worry about it. Right. I feel comfortable. I feel these uh, team members are honest or ethical. And um, I think that's something where it's been our advantage is, you know, you can come in and walk around our business and look at different things we have here with the facility. But at the end of the day, if the guest isn't happy, you know, and you're not executing on what you've told them, um, I think it's an issue. And that's one thing I would say, too, when you think about uh, you know, our survey system, you know, the old surveys that we used to have, and I like the newer ones now because they're a lot shorter, a lot more succinct and give us that information back to the guests. But what would happen? Guests would come in. We tell them, hey, we need you to put excellent on my survey. You know, I had excellent, excellent service. Well, excellent service to us back then was we told them to come in at eight o'clock on their appointment. We told them to pick up their car at five o'clock. And wow, okay, wasn't that great? Well, I don't know. I, I don't want to call that excellent service. I'd call excellent service. Hey, came in at eight o'clock, got the car done by one o'clock, maybe delivered back to my home. And, uh, and it was cleaned up and detailed and, and everything was what they said it was going to be on the cost of this service and so forth. So um, I guess that's, that's how I look at it, you know, each and every day, um, uh, you know, with, with how we take care of people. You um you mentioned your father, and uh, uh, we all know of the tremendous work ethic of Roger Penske, and obviously Greg that that runs in the family. You're already, but you're already number one in the world. You're number one at Longo Toyota for a long time. How do you drive yourself to find new and innovative ways to to compete and to and to win? I guess it's it's similar to what I just said. I mean, I guess that that racing background and that, that I guess in my case, athletics background that you have is, you know, it it feels good to be on the podium. Um, But there's a lot of people coming after us each and every day. And we don't get confused about that. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, you have to be prepared. You have to be ready every day. The business is changing so much. And I think, which has been great, which I like technology has really come into the business now. And I think it's made it easier for our team members, easy for our guests, a lot more intelligent guests when they come in on information about whether it's the cars are going to buy, the services are going to potentially ask about, um, you know, we've been able to, been able to send, uh, you know, pictures now back to the guest on additional service recommendations right on the SRs and it's more credibility for our team. So, you know, in my case, I look at it that way. I look at this business as, as a race and it gets me motivated each and every day. Um, you know, seeing all the different uh, uh, different dealers that are in some cases, you know, I guess trying to, you know, trying to potentially, uh, you know, knock us off. I mean, we've been dealing with that our whole whole career. But, you know, look, we've won because of great people, uh, not me, but because of all the different people that are, you know, that are around us. And, uh, you know, th- that's really why we've won and been number one over the years. But I think that drives everybody, right? Everybody wants to do well, generally, you know, and, and when you hire people, that's why if you get the right ones on the bus, yeah. you know, I think that's important. The other thing we've tried to do over the years too, which I think has helped with this is when we, when we manage a Brit, we move up a manager, we want that manager to have at least been on some type of team or worked together on a team. Um, I think if you haven't, you don't have that same ability to, to, to relate to people that maybe you might not go to dinner with that person, but you know, they're going to be good for your team and you're going to be able to, you know, work together. Um, and I think that's been a, been important for us, but I think, um, you know, every day is a different day. 
you know, when you, when you look at this business, um, you know, people come into service, people come into parts, people come into collision center, they're in new and pre-owned. And, uh, you know, I think that piece of it is really, uh, you know, really, really important, uh, you know, for us that to be able to, 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 to just figure out how do we, how do we win that race every day? You know, and that's, I guess, you know, how I look at it. And that's what keeps me motivated when I get in every morning. I love it. Um, what is your feeling on, and how do you envision the importance of fixed operations going into the future? Because here we are in the retail car business. We're just coming out of the, this pandemic uh, season. Um, what do you, what do you foresee for fixed ops? Well, look, I, I think, you know, fixed ops is going to be, is, is always important, has always been very important for our businesses. And uh, I don't see that, that waning, even with, uh, you know, they talk about electric cars are going to put, you know, all of a sudden you're not going to have service departments. Well, first off, I think that's a long way off in regards to, you know, not fixing IC engines. We have 300 million, you know, car park today in the U.S. Uh, what, is, what is all electric today? It's mm -hmm. in that market. Look, it's going to grow. Um, but if you said it took, you know, maybe 50% of the market here in 2035. <clears throat> so that would be about 8 million, you know, cars a year, right? We still have all these other IC, you know, cars that are, that are still out on the road today. So I think that part of it, they're definitely coming. Electric's coming. I think we got to embrace it. I think it's right for the environment. I also think that plug-in, you know, hydrogen, those are all one fuel cell. I think will all be part of this, you know, growth that we have when we go to environmentally friendly products. Um, but I do also think that you have to look as fixed ops uh, team members is to look at what can we do and take away from vendors, <clears throat> you know, that are coming to our dealerships. Do you do leather today? Um, do you do wraps on vehicles today? Paintless dent, you know, fixing wheels, fixing, um, um, you know, to be done that, uh, you know, in-house, right? Not having that moved to, uh, to, to another vendor. So anything you can do internally, I think is going to be important as we go forward. Um, and I think that's something that, that we've done and will continue to do to have kind of that quick, quick service for paintless dent or, you know, fixing wheels and those kind of things I think we'll see here in the future. And then I think also, you know, technology, I mean, being able to really, you know, make it easier for the, for the guests when they come in, not having to wait in line to be able to drop off the vehicle automatically, whether it goes onto a kiosk that I know that's out there today or automatically have the appointment already done online. Um, people can pay today, of course, through Apple Pay. We're sending them videos and pictures of their vehicles, um, you know, today. So as long as we continue to build that credibility, I think those people will come back. And whether it's autonomous or a non-autonomous electric, um, they're still going to need servicing. And we just got to make sure to pivot and to make sure we change, you know, with that, that, that change of what's being sold. Um, and so they're going to need more interior work, maybe if it's autonomous, right? more leather, more interior tires are going to need, they're going to need some of those technical um, parts of it as well to fix the vehicles, right? Especially the autonomous. So that's, that's all fixed. We're just going to have to do a lot more training on technology and those kind of things. Greg, finally, um, your family, the Penske family and your brands have been doing things right for a long, long time, both in racing and business. Uh, and as you mentioned in life, um, for our audience, our dealers, our managers watching, what advice do you have for them uh, looking ahead into 2022? And um, you know, what would you what would you say to them? Well, look, I think we just went, you know, went through the pandemic. And I think first is, you know, don't be shy about, you know, disrupting, uh, disrupting your business. You know, if everything works, you're not trying hard enough. So I think it really made sense that quickly we had to pivot, um, you know, on those on those kind of you know, issues that came up in front of us. I think also thinking long term and not short short term, you know, really start thinking right now, you know, what, what's what's this business going to look like five to 10 years from now? What's my service departments, parts departments? You know, what am I going to need uh, when you think about the different, um, you know, drive trains and, and power trains that we're going to have, you know, going forward? Um, think about that now. You're going to go, you know, build a big service facility today. Um, you got a 10 to 20 year lease on that particular building. You know, do you really need to build that many stalls? You know, what do the stalls look like? You know, we've got here with Toyota today, we have to have, you know, fuel cell stalls. We have to have electric stall today. Yeah. We've got you know, all the different things right now. Think, okay, what's that going to look like? So I think to me, that's, that's probably the, 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 the most is to be able to say, hey, what does it look like long term, you know, that's out there today? And I think, you know, in the end too, um, you know, what kind of team members do you want to have long term? You know, I think as well, we're going to have to have a lot more technical people 
you know, working in our businesses you know, long term as well. But uh, but for 22, again, don't be shy about disrupting your business. I mean, keep looking at areas that, you know, how, how can you where do you think if you read if you read the surveys of the guests, all I do is generally read the comments. Those are the ones that tell us the most about you know, exactly what are they thinking. But think about today, you know, what, what can we do better? What can you do better each and every day? You know, make sure you take the time to do it and react to it, you know, as well, right? React to those, those kind of things that way. But the, the, the business is going to continue to evolve. We've never seen it move this fast. And it's going to move even faster over the next 10 years. So you're going to have to be prepared. Um, and you need to communicate that to your team as well. Don't wait until it happens. Say, so, you know, this is going to come potentially. And, uh, and I think we've got to be prepared to those. But look, you still got to, you know, still got to execute, you know, each and every day. But number one, still about human capital still about a great team. Love it. Great advice. Greg Penske, thank you so much on behalf of the Fixed Ops community. And uh, we appreciate you sharing your, your time with us here today. Great, Ted. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Greg Penske here today at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.